In this video, I'm going to demonstrate some ways of generating patterned vectors. So if you go into the downloaded folders, link in the description, we want to be still in part 02 functions. Open that one up, select folder, and I'm going to open up part 012 intervals and lens space. That's the document we're going to be working in. Again, all these links will always be provided in the video descriptions. First thing I'm going to do is run my basic formatting and clear out everything to get to a blank slate and the starting point that I just want to use. So control enter, scrolling on down. So intervals or interval notation is a way of creating patterned vectors. So for example, right here, we have 10 colon 10 colon 50. This will generate a vector starting at 10, ending at 50 with a step size or increment of 10. So we'll go from 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Let me run this section. I just click anywhere in it and do control enter scrolling up. All right, and here's my first result. This is what gets displayed out by these displays right here. I am still using parentheses and a blank space inside of single quotes to just do a new line right here. And we see 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 is the vector that was generated by this line of code right here. Increments of 10 is just the name of my variable. What am I putting into that variable? I'm putting in a vector from 10 to 50. Scrolling on down, on this line of code, I'm creating a new variable named triples, and I'm putting into that variable a vector of the values from zero to nine with an increment or step size of three. In other words, I start at the zero, and then I add three to get my next number, and then I add three to get the next number after that, and then I add three until I get to this ending number at the end. Continuing on down. In this example, I show how you can count down from 10. I need to scroll down a little bit in my command window as well. Here's my results for this section of code right here. I choose a variable name, and I say equals, what's the starting number? What am I gonna add to that starting number repeatedly to get all my intermediate values, and where am I gonna stop? And so in this manner, I can count down, get all the whole numbers from 10 down to one. Continuing down, the middle number in the notation, where we have the first number, colon, the second number, colon, the third number, the middle number is optional if you want a default step size or increment of one. So if I want all the whole numbers from 25 to 30, I can just do 25 colon 30, and there they are right there. So these are creating vectors for me in a patterned fashion. The pattern is we just add the same number to the starting number over and over and over again to get all the intermediate values up until the final number. Similar to intervals is a built-in MATLAB function called linspace. Let me widen this slightly here. So linspace is a function for generating evenly spaced lists of numbers, evenly spaced vectors, same as intervals, same as the colon notation right here. However, there's an important difference. With the colons, the middle number specifies what we want the increment or increase to be. What are you going to add each time? With linspace, we do define a starting number and an ending number, but we don't define what the spacing or increase or increment or interval, all these words I'm going to use in the same way, we don't specify what that should be. Instead, we specify how many total values we want to have in the end. Scrolling down. So right here, I'm using an interval to generate 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. I'm specifying the spacing is 20. Down here, I'm using linspace. It is a function, so I use the word linspace or the phrase. It's short for linear spacing. And then parentheses, and three numbers separated by commas. The, space, the spaces themselves are optional, but the commas are not. The first number is the starting number, so start at zero. The second number is the ending number. Sometimes people get confused because they think the middle number should be something else, but it's not, it's the ending number. So the number that appeared on the end here, that might go in the middle, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. So starting number, ending number, and then the third number is how many total values you want. So if I want four values evenly spaced from zero to 100, this is what I would say. I'm gonna put that information into a variable named x. Let me resize the window here and then run this section. So the interval on this line, x equals zero colon 20 colon 100, generated this vector. And this lin space right here generated this vector. How can I get four evenly spaced values starting with zero and 100? Well, I need to add 33 and a third each time. So zero plus 33 and a third, 33 and a third plus 33 and a third, 66.6 .6 repeating, add 33 and a third to that, and we get to 100. I'm displaying these horizontal vectors vertically because I think they're easier to read. The way that I'm doing that is I'm not just displaying x here, I'm displaying x apostrophe. 
The apostrophe is going to be for a vertical display. And actually, that's not entirely true. The apostrophe is actually the transpose. So any rows that you have, any data in rows, it's going to turn those into data in columns. So I had one horizontal row of data. I transpose it with the single apostrophe after the variable name. And now I have a single column. I do the exact same thing down here. One thing to note that is, I think, a little bit odd that MATLAB does is when it has groups of numbers with some decimal numbers, it will indent those more than if it's just dealing with whole numbers. That's just a design decision that somebody who was working on MATLAB made. Continuing on down. Suppose I want three evenly spaced values between one and four. This is how I would express that and put it in a variable named capital Q. I'm just making up variable names at this point. Capital Q equals lin space, all one word, all lowercase, parentheses, start at one, end at four, three total values. Display it out vertically, and then get the difference between all the pairs of numbers in the resulting vector named Q. So let me resize my window and run that. So here's my vector Q displayed vertically because of the apostrophe, the transpose. 2.5 is midway between one and four, so there are my three total values evenly spaced. What's the spacing? Diff can be used to tell me that. So diff of my vector, it just subtracts the pairs. 2.5 minus one, 1 1.5. Four minus 2.5, the other 1.5. And they should all be the same because that's how lin space works. And they should all be the same if I use interval notation either. It'll just be a different spacing. Continuing slightly down. Just a different example. Suppose I want three evenly spaced values between one and three. Well, start at one, end at three, give me three total values. That one's kind of boring because it's just one, two, three. Probably there's easier ways to generate that. But this is just a demonstration. So that highlighted portion there is this display of the transpose displaying it vertically. And then if I diff Q, I subtract the pairs. Two minus one is one, three minus two is one. And so that's the spacing between them. Continuing down. Here's another way of looking at it. And really this is just me using variable names that I think are more indicative of what's happening so that you know maybe it's more memorable. It is such a good idea to create some sort of reference sheet for yourself if you're gonna be using MATLAB a lot. My code examples here have a lot of redundancy because I wanna make sure that I'm emphasizing my point. But it can be very, very useful for you to just pick out what is the like simplest or most sensible explanation or example of one of these items, one lin space, one interval, and just put that into a MATLAB document that you're gonna use as a reference. Make it shorter, just maybe one example of each so it's easier to find stuff. Use Control F, I'm gonna do that now, Control F. You see this little box popped up. You can search for whatever word you wanna search for. Um, I don't know, lin space, what I'm gonna search for. Great, and it pops up right there. And I can use the arrow keys to go to the next instance or the previous instance of lin space, whatever I want. Control F works in like all manner of different programs from web browsers to Word documents to pretty much anything. So anyway, this example here is just to emphasize. So in the parentheses of lin space here, what goes first? Well, the starting number, what goes second? The ending number, what goes third? The count of how many total values I want. And so in this case, I begin at 50, I end at 75, and my count of values, my total number of values is five. So let me run this section, control enter. And it turns out that to get five evenly spaced values from 50 to 75, you need to add six and a quarter each time. One important thing to note is that not all variables are allowed. And I'm not just talking about how you can't put spaces in things and you can't put parentheses or other punctuation in there. Some just like text is not allowed. For example, I used ending here. I cannot use end. And you can see it changes color. There's a red underline. The like error icon pops up over here. I cannot use this because this is a reserved keyword. End is used for other things in MATLAB. And we'll see shortly in a couple videos here something that end is useful for. So if you happen to name a variable something that you shouldn't, MATLAB will let you know and you just need to change it to something else. So I used ending right there. Continuing on down. Now compare this result that we just got using lin space, so starting at 50, ending at 75, five total values, to this interval notation. We're going to begin at 50, same as before. We're going to end at 75, same as before. But the third variable name, I've actually changed the name of the variable as well because it represents something different. This is going to be the space between values. Five is the spacing, not the total number of numbers you get. 
and I put that between the colons, so I have the beginning, how much I'm going to increase by, or the spacing, whatever you want to call it, and then the ending value. And let's run this section, Control Enter. And I just displayed it below the previous section right here. So I got the previous section and then this one. In this one, I'm specifying that it goes up by five every time. I'm not specifying that there's five total values, and there aren't. There are six. We'll see some more examples of intervals and linspace in future videos. I want to keep these short. That is all for this one.